Good happy Tuesday morning. I'm Riley King and welcome to the Riley King Newscast. Let's get started. First up, signs in Manchester ask drivers to give to charities, not panhandlers. Let's take a listen to this video from WMR News 9, Jean Mackin. If you write anything on your computer, you need to get Grammarly. I write pretty much all day, every day, and Grammarly makes my writing better. As a student, I like that it's free, actually. During the evening commute on Elm Street, a man holds a sign reading, Homeless, please help, while standing in front of the city's new sign that tells drivers your generosity could lead to a fatality. Please donate to a local charity. It lists places to go for food, shelter, and help. This man won't talk on camera, but tells us not everyone is an addict. Some people just have hard times. Manchester police say they're concerned because between 2015 and June 1st this year, 24 people involved with panhandling overdosed. Six of them died. The large majority of that population are feeding some sort of addiction or have some underlying mental illness. And to just give them $5 um, and potentially lead to a fatal overdose. I'm sure that's not what the person who's giving would really want. And the organizations listed on the new signs agree, saying give to them if you really want to help. I think it's a great idea. Um, I hope people listen to it and think of what's behind the sign. Um, you know, let's get people into organizations that can help them up and out. Some drivers still open their windows and wallets in front of the new sign. Others say they're heeding this advice. These guys walk right up to your window and kind of hold that sign right in front of your face, make you feel guilty, and, and who knows what they do with the money. This city is clearly saying that money should be steered to organizations that can help. In Manchester, Gene Mackin, WMUR, News 9. Okay, and there you go on that report. High times and hijackings in state office building comes to an end. Let's take a listen to this video from WCBB Mike Bodette. Brunch on the waterfront was quite like this. Views included. Our new a la carte brunch features traditional classics, our famous waterfront Benedict bar, and of course, cocktails. Mark your Sundays and join us in Meow. One is putting the high into the headquarters of the high occupancy vehicle zipper lane near the Braintree split. What appears to be a marijuana plant sitting in the window of this Massachusetts Department of Transportation building in the middle of the Southeast Expressway. A few days later, someone emailed Five Investigates this picture of the plant, complete with a state police sticker and a note reading, I would seriously consider taking that plant out of a state building if you like your state job. Love the state police. Recreational marijuana is legal in Massachusetts and people are allowed to grow pot in their homes. But it's not legal to grow it in a state building. State police say MassDOT notified them about a possible plant here last week, but a search of the building didn't turn up anything. In a statement, state police tell Five Investigates, we are looking into whether someone from the state police knew of the plant's existence prior to DOT's notification to Troop H. We are cognizant, however, that the note and a sticker seen in the photo provided to WCVB are most likely a poor attempt at humor perpetrated by someone outside of the MSP. MassDOT is also doing its own investigation, and it's no longer a laughing matter for two employees. A spokesperson telling us tonight that those two employees have been placed on unpaid administrative leave pending the outcome of the investigation. Mike Bodette, Five Investigates. All right. Okay, and there you go on that report. Congress man singles out female senators from the North 
East over health care. A Texas Republican congressman says it's absolutely repugnant that the GOP-led Senate hasn't acted on repelling health care law, and he singled out some female senators from the Northeast. In a radio interview with 1440, Keys Rep. Blake Fatsholder said the Senate has failed to show the con courage to dismantle the health care law. The Senate is expected to vote Tuesday on whether to move ahead on the legislation. First hold complained about some female lawmakers and said if it was a guy from South Texas, I might ask him to step outside and settle his Arrowboro style. Maine Senator Susan Collins has been consistent in opposing the GOP replacement Obama to Obamacare. Other female senators who have expressed Reservation are Shelley Moore Capito of West Virginia and Lisa Marsky of Alaska. In response sent to WMTW News 8 Monday night, Collins said, In 20 years in the Senate, I have done a lot of people making suggestions about how to resolve legislation dispute. But until today, nobody had ever suggested a duel. Alphabet stocks drop to concerns that revenue growth is going to cost more. Alphabet reported to steep drop in second quarter profit thanks to a $2.74 billion fine year authorized regulation slapped on its Google unit. John McCain set for Senate return on Tuesday following cancer diagnosis. Let's take a listen to this video from ABC News. John McCain's fighting spirit. Tonight, that senator offering his first words since he was diagnosed with a brain tumor. ABC's Mary Bruce on the Hill. Tonight, Senator John McCain is battling brain cancer in classic McCain fashion, tweeting, I greatly appreciate the outpouring of support. Unfortunately for my sparring partners in Congress, I'll be back soon, so stand by. McCain is a giant of the Senate and an American hero. How's your food? Not like as a young Navy commander, he spent more than five years as a prisoner of war in Vietnam, enduring torture and cruel conditions, and as a politician, earning that label as a maverick. In 2008, picking Sarah Palin as his running mate and holding firm against President Trump. And tonight, he's now facing what could be his toughest battle yet, a brain tumor called glioblastoma. His doctors say the tumor's been removed, but it's the most aggressive type, and experts say likely to return. 
It's the same form of tumor that killed Ted Kennedy and Joe Biden's son, Beau. The average survival time is just 14 months. These tumors, depending on where they are in the brain and their size, their location relevant to important functional areas of the brain can be even more challenging to treat. Supporting words pouring in from President Trump, Obama, Hillary Clinton, and of course his dear friend, Senator Lindsey Graham, who's talked to McCain. How's his spirit, how's his mood when you talk to him? Well, it was better than mine. And tonight, McCain is the one offering words of encouragement. He has called me three times this morning. No more woe is me, Lindsay. He is yelling at me to buck up. So I'm going to buck up. Calling him three times saying, toughen up. All right, Mary joins us from Capitol Hill tonight. And Mary, we know that Senator McCain is at home in Arizona recovering after having that tumor removed. And you're learning more about his next steps here. David, we're told McCain is likely to go through chemotherapy and radiation. But those close to him tell us he's eager to get back here to Washington and put that powerful voice of his back to work. Oh, okay. and there you go on that report. And that does it for the Riley King newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your Tuesday and see you back here later on today. Goodbye, everyone.